You need to know what's the benefit, what's the good with this operation, what's the bad with this operation. I spent a lot of time talking to patients about that, and I think, I think patients need to be informed. What, what's the upside? Well, the upside with hip replacement surgery, I think you can tell most patients, is that overwhelmingly relief of pain is excellent. Return of function, being able to get back to what you want to do, and motion, which is often lost in a hip, will return. So that's the upside of the procedure. What's the downside? Well, like any operation, there are risks. And the risks are the patient can have a medical problem related to the surgery, heart problem, lung problem. These do occur, and it's important that the patient ask the surgeon, what's the incidence of this in your hospital? What is the infection rate with a hip replacement in your institution? Uh, just to get a better feel on what those numbers are and what the potential risk is. When I have a conversation with a patient about the downside of this operation, I generally break the risk component into three categories. The general medical risks that you have with any operation, and which really are not any greater with a hip replacement than with another operation. The risks of anesthesia, the risks of having surgery and potential bleeding that can occur, the risks of an abdominal or some other incidental problem that can occur incidental to the operation. Now, they tend to be very uncommon, and our patients are all screened medically prior to surgery. So we're aware if there is a potential issue prior to doing the operation. Doing that, and with expeditious surgery, the operative time for hip replacement is between an hour and an hour and 30 minutes. So it's not a long operation. And then using a very safe anesthetic, like an epidural, the possibility of medical problems tends to be very low. The main medical problem we worry about is what we call thromboembolic problems. These are problems related to deep vein thrombosis, clotting that occurs in the vein system because we're working on the limb. And all patients are treated prophylactically to prevent those from becoming a major problem. So for example, after surgery, every patient has mechanical pumps on their leg, pump the blood from the leg. Every patient will be given some type of anticoagulant. It might be aspirin, it might be Coumadin, it might be heparin. Something will be used for four to six weeks to protect them. Infection is a major problem, generally requiring reoperation and prolonged antibiotics and disability. So we want to prevent that. Now, infection can occur around the operation or it can occur in a delayed fashion afterwards. What you want to do is prevent the occurrence of infection during the surgery. If that happens, then the patient usually has to be brought back to the operating room. And on occasion, if the infection is around the, around the implant, then the implant has to come out. And then you have to put a temporary implant in, six weeks intravenous antibiotics, and then put the implant back in. And the infection rate at our hospital here at HSS, and it's 0.1%. The infection rate in the community is probably around 1% in most hospitals. Now, there's another form of infection that can occur because you have a foreign body in your system, and that is what we call a delayed infection. So if you have an infection somewhere else in your body, then the bacteria get into your bloodstream and then could focus around the device. That's a delayed infection. That's also a serious problem because, again, that infection oftentimes will get around the device, and you can't eradicate it unless you take the device out. So we give patients antibiotics to prevent that bacteria potentially seeding around the hip. There are different anesthetics that one can use to do this operation. We feel very strongly at Hospital for Special Surgery that regional anesthesia is the safest way to have this procedure. Regional anesthesia means not the use of a heavy general anesthetic. So we sedate our patients but we use anesthetics that block the zones that we're working in. So in this case, we use epidural anesthesia. Very common anesthetic, very common in childbirth, and very safe, very light. Patients awake immediately after the operation without the side effects of a heavy general anesthetic. You want to go to a hospital that has high volumes of this operation. You go to a hospital that's 25 or 50 hip replacements a year, 
in our doing gallbladders and colon operations and all kinds of different procedures, the focus is not going to be as intense on the patient and their recovery after hip replacement surgery. Now, Hospital for Special Surgery is a unique hospital. We are essentially an orthopedic rheumatology hospital. So that this institution, we will do anywhere between five and 6,000 joint replacements a year. So at any one time, we're, we're doing 30 to 40 hip replacements in a week. So the hospital is focused toward the care of these patients. That means the physical therapy is focused, nursing is focused, anesthesia is focused, the whole surgical team is focused. So you get a very different recovery in a setting such as we can offer here than in a general hospital where they're doing all kinds of different surgeries. How does a patient with hip arthritis pick their surgeon or their doctor? And what questions should that patient ask the doctor before they have surgery with that doctor? Certainly the experience of the surgeon in hip replacement surgery. There's ample literature that has documented that high volume surgeons who do a lot of hip replacements or high volume hospitals that care for a lot of patients with hip replacement surgery, the outcomes are better. So certainly the first question to the surgeon should be, doctor, how many of these operations do you do a year? I would say that a surgeon to be experienced and be comfortable with this procedure should really do at least 25 to 50 implants a year. Now there are surgeons who specialize in this operation who will do 100 to 200 to sometimes 300 hip replacements in a year. So I think you want to get that information from your surgeon first, first hand. <music>